It's good to know Jefferson. <laughs> <laughs> Permanent fixture. <laughs> um, thank you, uh, Chair. Is the slides uh, on the screen for everyone? Yes, we can see that. Thank you, Chair. Um, Chair, my my, um, my presentation is very short. I'm, I'm going to stick to the details. Um, uh, I'm not going to bother the committee with the background. The committee uh, knows the background of the, the tabling of the DASC reports. Uh, we're not going into the detail of the report itself. We're mainly here focusing on Section 177 of the Constitution and where Parliament fits in to the process as outlined in that section for tonight's discussion. Um, in terms of the legal framework, Chair, the, the Section 177 of the Constitution starts in um, Sub 1, where it says the Judicial Commission finds um, that a judge suffers from one of the areas then of, that could lead to removal, which is um, gross misconduct and gross incompetence, incapacity. So that's the stage that the Judicial Services Commission already um, completed. They had their inquiries, their tribunals, and they came to a finding and then submitted their findings um, or tabled the findings to the Speaker in the National Assembly. That was then referred to this committee for consideration report. And what the committee, where the committee falls in is the committee is an extension of the House. So a portfolio committee does the, the background work uh, that feeds back into the National Assembly when there is a, a, a vote like this resolution that um, Section 1771B then calls for. So um, this constitution says the National Assembly calls for that judge to be removed by a resolution adopted with the supporting vote of at least two thirds of its members. So what's different here from um, what members might recall from Section 89 and Section 194 of the constitution is the inquiry process has already been done. Uh, the, it's not for Parliament here to um, uh, to look at what the the um, the grounds were. So the Judicial Service Com Commission has done that. So now it comes the role of Parliament here, unlike in sections 89 and 194, is it performs a check and balance. Um, uh, function. So with the different arms of government, there's always a, a check and balance, the legislature to the judiciary, the judiciary to the executive, the, exe uh, the legislature to the executive, um, to make sure that even though we have a separation of powers, that, that there is a balance in the exercise of the responsibilities the constitution places on a certain arm of government. So um, the NA's role here in section 177 is therefore such a, such a check it's um, just uh, it's a uh, it's keeping that balance uh, in the sequential roles as set out in 177. So it's the JSC, it's the NA, and then it's the president in that sequential role. The NA then has the limited role now of um, of the resolution stage for the removal of um, of a judge. So um, in that then the, the NA can cannot or should never simply rubber stamp anything. Every decision, every vote that the NA takes needs to be um, rational. Uh, therefore, what the committee can now do in, um, in doing the background work as an extension of the House, uh, seeing as no special rules are necessary, as this isn't the type of situation where we are doing an inquiry. It's merely a normal oversight role where there's a check um, function for the NA to do. The committee in the background then can look at whether um, can determine its own process. Uh, the committee might, might even look at um, how it considers the removal of magistrates um, in that process and basically looking at whether it feels that everything was ticked, that all the boxes were ticked, that, or that the procedure that was followed in the JSC was fair and then reports on whether it felt like everything is in order back to the National Assembly so that that National Assembly vote can be informed and everybody can apply their mind when that vote is taken so that it's a rational decision that's being taken when the resolution in terms of section 177 is um, that vote is exercised. So Chair, in short, uh, this is uh, um, in terms of our reading of the constitution, a situation where it's the normal, normal powers and functions that a committee has in terms of the rules 
that is all in play here. It's a check and balance. It's, just, it's, it's not redoing anything. Um, the one arm of government can't usurp the constitutional powers um, given to another. So um, the NA here can't take on the role that the JSC has already um, exercised or the powers and the functions that the JSC has already exercised. So it's a very um, limited scope, that second sequential role where we are now. And it is for the committee then to decide how best it would like to proceed within the perimeters of the normal rules of the assembly. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Lutz. Uh, members, that is the presentation uh, from the team by the Parliamentary Legal Services. I have the following hands, Honorable Janji, followed by Honorable Swart, in that order. Honorable uh, Janji. Good evening to you, Chair, and to members of the committee and everybody here. Just perhaps as a start to thank uh, um, Barbara Lutz and Mr. Njigela for a very brief presentation. We're used to, to very long uh, presentations, Chair. Uh, let me appreciate that. And I think uh, she's setting a tone which I want to follow uh, in that regard. I just want to, um, in the interest of uh, this particular process, to just uh, perhaps raise one question, Chair, and uh, make a few suggestions and recommendations for us as, as a committee. Uh, really, that's what I want to do. The, the, the first uh, uh, question or query that I would like uh, both of them to answer and the committee can assist in that regard. Firstly, whether uh, has the speaker of the National Assembly received uh, every documentation um, from the JSC uh, as uh, it would be required for for, for the National Assembly to apply its mind properly on this issue. Has that office received all what it needs to, to, to have received? And if so, um, has that been transferred to this committee, to the members, uh, in terms of what, what we have? Uh, that, that is important, Chair, uh, so that we, it, it's a start of a process where we need to be very clear uh, on how we apply our minds uh, on these issues. So it, it would be important that uh, uh, they indicate that uh, so that we move from a, a, a premise that there's nothing outstanding, there's nothing that uh, will hinder us once we start the process. Uh, that's really my, my first question and, and request, Chair. Uh, the answer that, uh, I would want uh, as point number two, Chair, to suggest uh, to both Mr. Njigela, the legal services, uh, and uh, Mr. Ms. Lourdes, uh, to assist the committee to come back and present a full report, reduce this JSC report into a presentation to this committee. Um, and, and hopefully by then we would have received everything would have read as members everything else that they, they present such a report to a committee meeting that in your, under your leadership chair that you we might decide that you will convene because I am aware that uh, uh, even though we're finishing tomorrow justice committee a certain task that we still need to do we might want to exploit that opportunity that during the recess we have that time to get this full presentation of the entire JSC report. Um, because for us to speak about the next processes, that is your starting point um, a, a, as a committee. And, and once we have that, it would mean that Chair would be in a position to have committee deliberations uh, on what would have been presented to us, what would have read uh, as, as a committee. And, and, and again, fourthly, under your leadership, 
we would then be in a position uh, based on our own deliberations, whatever nature of deliberations we're going to have, to submit a report uh, to the National Assembly for the National Assembly to consider whatever report we place in front uh, of the House. That, that those would be my, my starting uh, points, Chair, that I want to, uh, in the interest of them being brief, I would also like just to be brief, but stay on, 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 on these kind of more process matters uh, before one gets into any substantive matters uh, uh, as of now. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you very much, Honorable Janke. Honorable Swart. Uh, no, thank you, Chair. I, um, please just let me know if it becomes unclear and I'll turn off my video. But I'm, I'm grateful for the very short presentation. And to a certain degree, I, I agree with Mr. With the Honorable Dianti in as much as this is the beginning of a process. Um, we're definitely not going to get into the discussion of any merits or anything tonight. It's purely a discussion of the process and for us to understand what the role of Parliament is, given that there's no specific legislation that sets out in any detail the process that Parliament must follow in this case. Um, and of course, given the fact that we are exercising an oversight function. So I need to ask a few questions in what understanding the process. And I appreciate the fact the question about the material and the question about possibly another presentation uh, on the contents, but clearly we would need time to apply our minds and go through all the material. So that's very important that we first establish whether we've got all the material and then be given the time to go through it and then to receive that presentation. But at this stage, um, Dr. Lutz did refer to a few issues which would refer to almost, she, I think she said a tick box, uh, box ticking process of oversight, um, where one would look at rationale, whether it's rational and fairness, similar to the process we follow with magistrates. One would possibly then presume that that would mean that we and understanding the separation that one does not engage in a review as that has already been done. Um, this is a very limited scope. And I don't want to go further than that, but that would be my understanding, a very limited scope that we, and again, subject to discussion, but we not engage in a full inquiry here would be my understanding. That's already been held if, in view of the separation of powers. Would the legal advisors agree with that approach as a preliminary idea and subject to us further engaging on the process. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Swart. Honorable Horn. Thank you, Chair. And yeah, also from our side, uh, thank you to the legal services for a, a concise and understandable um, report and their advice. Uh, Chair, yes, I, I would think that for us the challenge would be ultimately as the committee who in essence must advise the National Assembly to maintain the balance between not, not serving as a rubber stamp as, as legal services put it uh, and to embrace that, that check and oversight function while not, not uh, uh, venturing onto the terrain which could make us in any way guilty of acting as a review body. Uh, so in that sense, I think we, we must wrestle with what would be the best way forward. Um, it is, of course, the first time that Parliament deals with, with a matter like this, and in the absence of specific rules, which is, of, of course, I don't think ne necessary to deal with the matter, um, we must uh, be very careful, in, in, in my view, uh, not to deal with the matter in any way or form that could accuse us of, of uh, not following a due process in as far as our process is, is, should be very limited. Um, so I would ask, Chair, that in addition to the, the matters raised already by the Honourable Jainke about all of the documents as supported by, by the Honourable Swart, that 
what legal services in, in a future meeting, if they are not positioned to do so this evening, should also advise us on is to what extent um, could it be argued that that the manner we, or the form which Parliament has developed to deal with similar matters places a responsibility to us to, to replicate processes with the necessary amendments. And in that regard, I specifically refer to the way Parliament has developed a process of dealing with reports from the, the, the Magistrates Commission when magistrates um, are, um, are uh, to be removed from office. Um, and what risks will there be for us as Parliament if we do not, with the necessary amendments, to make it applicable to the, to the, to the specific environment of dealing with, with a judge, if we do not uh, follow more or less the same process? So I'm in principle not against, for example, asking le legal services to assist us with an analysis of this report. But the reality is that when we deal with the magistrates and magistrates commission, what we ordinarily have is that the, the, the chairperson of the ethics committee of the magistrates commission comes and briefs parliament and then we as members of this committee has an opportunity to engage with him to ask the specific questions as part of our oversight and, and our check function. To, to ensure that ultimately we can make an informed decision and Parliament can make an informed decision. So I would, would like advice as well, whether it, we, we, as a consequence of that practice, is not an, under an obligation then to request that the chairperson of the JSC subcommittee dealing with disciplinaries should not be also asked to, 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 to do the same in terms of an engagement with this committee. Uh, in addition to that, uh, Chair, I'm, I'm uh, thankful for the presentation and I'm in broad agreement with, with the, the good advice we have received in terms of our very narrow function in this regard. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Horn, Honorable Master Kwachala. Thank you, uh, Chairperson, and good evening to the colleagues and of, everybody. Uh, Chairperson, I, I don't think that I have anything to say. My colleagues have already covered me uh, in even the question that I wanted to ask. Without waste of time, uh, I'll just stop here, Chairperson. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Maseko Chela, Honorable Leonis Breitenbach. Honorable Glenis Breidenbach. Let's move on. Honorable Velma Nibu Trachens. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, and good evening to everybody. I would like to go to the letter that was received from the Chief of Parliament Legal Services. Um, on point 15 in the letter, the second part of point 15 says that there is nothing also preventing the committee from writing to the Judge President Sope and requesting if there's anything um, in the JSC process that he would like to bring to the committee's attention. So I would like um, the legal team today to explain in more detail, uh, also particularly in relation to the narrow functions that they've presented um, to us tonight. Um, so if they could explain that in more detail, considering what they've presented tonight. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Honorable Breitenbach, are you back? Uh, yes, thank you. I'm trying to join on my PC because I'm 
joined on my telephone and I keep losing you and I keep not hearing what people are saying. Um, but I heard what the Honorable Horn said and uh, and I'm fully covered by what he said. Thank you. I think I think that it's um, opposite that we follow a similar a procedure as similar as possible to that followed by um, dealing with magistrates. So I think that's the most sensible thing to do. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Breitenbach. Uh, over to you, uh, Mr. Njigela and Dr. Lutz. Uh, thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Members. Um, uh, Chair, if I, I'm going to try and cover everything. I made notes of the questions. And if I can just ask uh, Mr. Njigela to supplement where he thinks um, I may have forgotten something or um, not have addressed something. As far as I am aware, the um, tribunal report, the JSC majority decision and minority decisions were tabled. I am not sure whether those documents have been forwarded to the committee. Um, I will leave it to my, to my colleagues um, uh, procedurally as committee secretaries to just confirm that to the committee. But as far as my knowledge goes, those are the documents that were sent to the National Assembly for tabling and thus referred. Um, those are the only documents that I am aware of on that one. Um, Chair, then I've made a note of the request for us to do a presentation overview of the report contents, and we will then um, respond accordingly and, and study those documents for um, the purpose of assisting the committee with its deliber deliberations and guiding that. Um, as far as the question of um, the, that it's not a redo. I think Audible Swart uh, raised that. Um, yes, I, 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 I need to qualify with, with tick box exercise. I'm, I'm no way indicating that the committee is just like randomly going through a process. It's very much what, what I mean with tick box is that checks and balances, um, is a checking whether the committee thinks everything uh, happened correctly, whether the process happened correctly, whether everybody that should have gotten an opportunity to um, give information was given such. So that type of thing of looking um, whether everything up until this point has been done correctly without venturing into that then redoing of the decision. So not um, taking on the role of looking at the merits and making a finding, but in looking at the process to date, is the committee um, secure in its view that everything has been done properly and that the National Assembly can then um, apply its mind and make a decision um, accordingly as it sees fit. Um, then with regard to the comparative uh, question of magistrates that Honorable Horde raised, Chair, with permission, I would like um, to ask that we then add that to uh, when we present on um, the of, of, with the work of um, looking at the reports as well. Um, we know broadly what the committee does with the, with the magistrates and also looking whether the process has um, uh, worked and how it has worked without redoing that decision. So our knowledge from that perspective, our suggestion from that perspective is very high level. With your permission, um, I'll liaise with um, Ms. Silkstone and the committee secretaries and just get more detail as to past practice and then draw up a, a kind of a rough guide as a suggestion of how that comparison can be and what the risks may be. And that then links to what Honorable Niva Drichen asked with regard to uh, the suggestion of maybe writing to the JP and asking if there's anything he would like to add. In that perspective, it, it speaks a lot to, once again, the process and, the, and how it's done with the magistrates, as I understand it, is to ask whether the person who is being affected by this process thinks that anything in the process was done incorrectly or, or, uh, or whether there was an oversight that the committee needs to be aware of um, so that everything was done properly and that everybody who stands to be affected by this decision has been um, given a fair opportunity. So in the fairness of the process context, then that is what, um, what, uh, why that, that um, comment was made there. Uh, Chair, I don't know if uh, Ms. Njikela has anything to add, but I think that covers um, what I have made notes on. If I may, Chair. Yes, Mr. Njigela. Am I audible? Yes, you are. 
Chair, I, I, I think what we, we had hoped to, to clarify to the committee for the purposes of the start of the process was that there is a process that has already run and in terms of the constitution and in terms of the JSC Act, the issue of the finding of guilt or somebody suffers from incapacity is a matter that is exclusively within the competence of the Judicial Services Commission. The level where the committee is or parliament is at this moment is not for the committee or parliament to conduct a parallel inquiry. And I think the, the, the members of the committee will recall that we have been there before, where the constitutional court has sought to clarify the differences in terms of how the principle of separation of power works. If you look at the process it is in three steps. The Judicial Service Commission makes a finding. The committee makes a call by vote, which is two thirds majority. And the president based on the call by parliament does the removal. So it is a process that is a build up. So each arm of government needs to stay within its area of responsibility. And one area of responsibility has already been finished and closed, which is the finding by the peers of the JP, that is the judge president. Parliament has to, of course, not rubber stamp, as Dr. Lourdes was saying, satisfy itself that it has all the information that is required. And I'm happy that uh, Mr. Gyanchi has asked the question whether the committee has all the information. To the best of my knowledge, Chairperson, you have a referral by the acting Deputy Chief Justice. You have the ma majority judgment you have the minority judgment, and you have the finding of the Judicial Conduct Committee. So you have all of those which are relevant to the determination that they have made within what the Act allows them to do. Um, moving on, Chairperson, to the issue of that uh, Honorable Horn asked with regard to the process in as much as there are a number of possibilities we would like to caution again as i just done now in few minutes ago that the job of the committee is not to run a parallel process in as far as an inquiry into the guilt or otherwise that lies with somebody else and that somebody else is the JSC and that finding has been made. It could be that there may be clarifications that may be sought, I don't know. But we would like to caution that there must be a very careful consideration of the limits of each arm of government in as far as the issue is concerned. Um, I think those were the issues I just wanted to emphasize, Chair, based on what Dr. Lewis has already said. But we are available if the committee needs a summary of the findings, we will be happy to, to do that, working, of course, hand to hand with our colleagues in the committee staff and prepare that presentation at the right time. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you very much, Mr. Njigela and uh, Dr. Lutz. I think um, there was an issue that was raised by Honorable Horn. Maybe you, it might be part of your background research. Um, he made a point that uh, with the magistrates, the chair of the ethics committee, 
always comes and briefs us. Um, is there an equivalent in the JSC? Mr. Njibela? Yes, Chairperson. I, 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 I suspect, Chairperson, and I will need to check this again. Yes. The equivalent in this case will be the referring party that has referred the matter to us as parliament, and that will be the acting deputy chief justice in this particular instance. But there is also a judicial conduct committee which had done the actual inquiry. So we need to just check as to who will be the appropriate authority that will be equivalent to the magistrate commission that deals with that issue because the actual finding is by the Judicial Conduct Committee, which was at endorsed or adopted by the full Judicial Service Commission. So it could be the chairperson of the Judicial Conduct Committee or the acting Deputy Chief Justice who referred the matter to Parliament. So I think we may want to just go and verify that issue as to who will be the appropriate authority that must come in brief parliament. No, my uh, honorable Swart. Thank you, Chair. Um, I would also ask the parliamentary legal advisors to look into the issue of members sitting on this committee, such as myself, who filed a complaint against the judge president in an unrelated matter prior to this matter having been dealt with and whether that would require me or any other members who might have filed complaints to withdraw from the process as it could be a perception of bias. Maybe um, because we haven't commenced the processes yet, I would like um, advice at possibly at our next session on that uh, score because obviously they, one doesn't want to have any perception of bias in this process, although it's not a full inquiry, um, but I would, I'm just cautious in that regard. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Members, can I suggest the following, uh, that we ensure uh, with the assistance of the committee secretary or the committee secretariat that uh, all members have all the documents. I think that is the first point of call, that uh, we have all the documents uh, with us. Uh, secondly, a, a date will be determined where a presentation of uh, a summary and analysis of all the documents will be done uh, by the parliamentary legal services and all the other questions that were asked that uh, they could not uh, uh, provide um, ready-made answers that they, they undertook to do some further inquiries on that uh, in our next meeting that they do that. And then um, yeah, it was the issue of the documents, the issue of the, the, uh, of the, the presentation by the parliamentary legal services. And I think the issue that has been raised by Honorable Swart uh, members who have uh, made uh, complaints against the JP on other issues that are not related. Uh, if we can get some uh, advice on that, uh, um, a firm legal opinion on that, so that uh, we know how many, because I, I'm not sure how many members have, uh, uh, beside Honorable Swart, uh, have uh, laid complaints against the uh, the said judge, um, and then we will take it from there after we have received uh, the presentations um, and you have been able to do the comparative analysis between the process of the Magistrates Commission and this one, as it was asked uh, to Dr. Lutz, if you can quickly do that. Um, the issue of um, uh, giving the affected party a right of response 
uh, the question would be that would will it not amount to reopening of the process because what if a person comes with 100 issues that were not um, that in his uh, opinion were not properly uh, uh, dealt with then which means you must also give the same to the JSC that the right of response to the JSC will that not amount to opening of the process because I know that a specific provision that um, enjoined us to do that it was with respect to the removal of the directors and deputy directors of public prosecution and that is in the NPA Act so if also that can be looked at uh, if, if we if we we invite anybody even in writing to make further submissions will that not amount to a reopening of the process so members can we take it that those are the steps for now that we are going to follow is that uh, in order members Agreed, sir. yes sir. yeah that's fine Okay, that's fine. Uh, Honorable Ola. We have who? Yes, sir. No, no, I'm saying we are agreed with well, your well, conclusion. No, thank you very much. Um, I think we are done with this matter. Thank you to, uh, to the parliamentary legal services. We know that uh, this might be precise and, be, and appear to be brief, but a lot of work has gone into it. That is why it's so precise and understandable because a lot of background work has gone into it. And we thank you for that. And we, we, we further ask you to, to do more work um, in analyzing all these documents so that we can be better informed and engage with the matter going forward. Thank you very much. Um, I think on this matter, we are done. Um, I think there is one issue uh, where we have received a letter from Honorable James Self with respect to the issue of the parole. Um, um, so can I ask that this matter be be sent to the to the subcommittee for processing because it's a subcommittee matter. Is that in order, members? Yeah, that's fine. Yes, Che. Thank you very much. Uh, on that note, thank you very much. Uh, uh, we can allow Honorable Glennis Breitenbach to go and play with her dog. <laughs> it's my time now. My dogs have been sleeping for a long time already. <laughs> uh, Shana Tova, Happy New Year. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, we, I, I, I hope you have enjoyed it on our behalf. Honorable Janchi, do you want to say something? Your mic is on. No, I was just saying that Gladys must go and look after his her dogs. <laughs> Thank you very much. My, my dogs Thank are very well looked after. Thank you, Richard. Thank Hopefully. you very much. The, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much.